Honestly, my biggest strength in the kitchen has to be I'm willing to work with any type of person. When you work in the kitchen with a different chef, let's say every couple of years, you have to learn to adapt to a person's personality. In my, in my life, I've learned to adapt to how people think, how people act, and it honestly, it just goes over well. I've learned to deal with people's attitudes, I've learned to deal with people's strengths and weaknesses and build on that. So that honestly, that's how I feel my biggest strength is. <laughs> Members of a team, you always have your high and your low points. You have the ones with a big ego, you have the ones that are very have a lot of self-esteem issues, which comes off as a big ego. So you have to learn to balance each other. If you don't balance, you don't have a good team. I mean, if, someone, if someone's sick one day, you need to be able to step it up and take care of business because people don't care if there's someone sick, if, if their food's coming out. If their food doesn't come out, they don't care why. So when it comes to teamwork, I, it's essential in the kitchen because all in all, you're all getting paid the same. You're all getting paid every Friday, every other Friday. So you need to learn how to help each other so you guys can get through the day and go home to your families. Yes, um, I grew up in a family that was full of leaders and I learned from a young age, if you want it done right, do it yourself. So I'm very productive in the kitchen. If I feel something's not getting done, I will do it. Yes, it's gotten me in trouble in the past, but <laughs> I've learned to handle it pretty well. <laughs> oh yes, communication. Um, if you don't have, like front and back of the house, if your front of the house decides they're going to place an order, not knowing that they don't have that that food for the day, it's going to make the back of the house scramble. If there's no communication in the, between the back and the front of the house, there's no restaurant. And if there's no communication in the back of the house, there's definitely no restaurant. I mean, if you've got a check that's waiting 20 minutes, but you don't tell your saute man, I need that chicken breast on the fly, you're the one that's going to pay, not the entire kitchen's going to pay, not just that one person. So if you don't communicate with your chefs and you don't communicate with this front of the house, you have no restaurant. My ideal work environment, I grew up in a very country household, so I like the whole country cooking. So I like a very laid back feel. I don't like rush, rush, rush. And I'd rather the food come out right than come out on time. I mean, people are paying, yes, for fast service, but if it doesn't taste good and it doesn't look good, why would somebody buy it? I don't want to spend 20 minutes on a plate when it took, could take 30 and look a thousand times better. I made a, a spinach, mushroom, and cheese omelet. Uh, I work as a breakfast cook at, the, at this present moment, so I mean, I, I'm good at it. I, I admit that's one of my strengths. And I'm making the omelet, you learn, and you learn to make the perfect omelet, no wrinkles, no color. And it's a very time consuming process because if you don't get it right the first time, you can always redo it. But then I made a cheddar cheese biscuit to go along with it. And that cheddar cheese biscuit, again, takes time because you have to make sure you have the right ingredients. I did a Parisian fruit cup along with that, which came with a simple syrup, which was all handmade. So I am all in all made a breakfast menu, but my breakfast menu can also be served as a lunch or dinner due to a California menu style, which is what I want to have. AI has taught me, especially certain chefs here at the school, has taught me Sometimes skating by doesn't matter. You have to work. I mean, the real world, they're not gonna cut you any breaks. So this school has taught me it's fast paced. You have to keep up, if not, you know, you might wanna rethink your career. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's that simple. I mean, I mean I, the classes I've taken, they, yes, they teach you what you need to know, but they also teach you the world's not gonna be nice. There's gonna be chefs that you're gonna hate. You're gonna hate some of the people you work with but you have to learn to work with them. They've taught me as a chef where, where I want to be is a chef to where I can handle anybody at any time and I can adapt to any environment. Actually, yes, um, back in my freshman year of high school, uh, my <laughs> freshman year cooking class, Mrs. Goebel was my inspiration. She was a 86 year old uh, culinary. She took culinary arts and she got a master's in arts. And I stepped into a kitchen and it was just like fluid. I was able to catch on. And then I grew up in a household where everything was made from scratch. So I already had the knowledge and she just pushed me. And one day I'm just like, you know what, this is what I want to do. This is, the, this is the goal I want to set for myself. I started looking around at schools and this is the one I found. Edible art meaning to me it's food should tell a story. Every food has a different story of where it comes from. Edible art to me is, you can look at that plate and tell that plate that, that there's a story behind it. You know, the sauce, the starch, the meat, everything, the certain cut, everything has a story. 
and the story can be told by the chef instantly just by talking to them. You can see the passion in their eyes. That's art to me, is when you can see that passion on the plate that's in their heart. If you can't see that passion, to me, it's not art. Are you an artistic person? Yes, I am. I, um, not drawing-wise, I'm pretty good with, I used to design clothes, like just doodles, but I'm also good with colors. I've been obsessed with bright colors since I was younger. I mean, tie-dye is my favorite pattern. So to me, the more color on the plate and the more passion I can show by how good I want it to look and how good I want it to taste, that shows how I am as a chef and how my passion has grown. <laughs> Making one person smile a day, yes, it's hard, but it's something to look forward to each morning. Who am I going to make smile today? Who am I going to make laugh? I mean, there's no joy in life without laughter. There's no life without laughter. And through food, I've smiled so much because you do, I mean, you do, you do a dish, right? That dish is going to go on to somebody else. Yes, painting, you will get someone that's looking at it from years to come, but they'll also remember the, the meal they had two years ago if it was good. The chef I'm trying to become, I would probably say is a lifestyle. Culinary is you gotta live it, you gotta breathe it. You have to love what you do. And if you don't love culinary, <laughs> this isn't the business. I mean, you're gonna go into work at five o'clock in the morning, tired, and you still have to create that food. You still have to do it. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Or if you can't come in, you have to get someone else that will. So for me, it's a lifestyle. You have to be able to deal with the changing times. You have to deal with still learning. The culinary, you learn something new every day. You have to be able to learn. You have to be able to learn and work with people. In a business form, yes, it is a business, but the chef I want to be is, I want to make it a lifestyle. I mean, my, I want to be able to go home and still cook dinner. I don't want it to be just making money. I want it to be the passion of my life. I mean, you only get one chance to live, why not live with the way you want? So, I feel it's a lifestyle. That's a wrap.